next up we've got from a Coin Liquidity Solutions, Andre Boral, who's the Senior Business Development Manager, and Vinora Zukubaya, the Head of Marketing. Can we please have you on stage? Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think many projects in this room come across the following questions. Uh, where to take investments from? How to increase community members organically? How to outstand for more than 30,000 projects on CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap? And what options do you have to attract investors? So, my name is Vinor, I am CMO at Coin Liquidity Solutions, and we are operating on two main business aspects of the crypto market. The first is the fundraising and marketing, and the second is market making and liquidity management. Before we proceed next, I'll tell some more words about us. So, we've been on the market almost for five years. We have more than 200 existing clients. Uh, we have like 35 marketing campaigns, and we're operating on more than 90 exchanges at the moment. So, let's imagine that you already build your product, you have your MVP, you also just write your white paper. So what are the next steps? The next steps are the fundraising. In our company, we divide the fundraising into four steps. The first step is a due diligence. During the due diligence process, we just analyze your market. We also sharpen your white paper and just try to figure out your unique selling points. And we also make some small website audit. After that, after we're done with this part, we're moving forward and we're building the prospectus. This is the main step in case we want to attract the investors and especially, especially the VC and uh, big private investors. So we should build the tokenomics because it's the main financial document in the crypto space. We should prepare our pitch deck because this is the selling deck according to which you will sell your project to the investors. We'll also try to figure out how the proceeds will be used and state it numerically. And in case if you're already trading on the exchange, we'll prepare for you the OTC deal. The next step, the third step, will be the analytical preparation of your website. So what should we do? Definitely we should work with all like tools that are available for the analyzing your target audience and how the people are behaving on, behaving on your website. We conduct the A-B test using Google Optimizer and also we'll build the emails for our investors. And the final, but the most crucial step, is the investor's roadshow. During this time, we should target investors and getting some initial, some like first sentiment from them to understand what we can just make even better. As soon as it's done, we try to pitch them. And during this process, all founders should also take action into it and should be able to pitch their uh, project properly. So after we're done with the pitching, after we're done with the fundraising, what are the next steps? The next step is going viral because community is crucial in the crypto industry and crucial for every product itself, not only in the crypto market. So and the main solution for it is definitely marketing. So through, in our company, we use four main tools for marketing promotion. The first one is the social media. In crypto space, it's the main thing that you should concentrate your attention on. After that, there is advertising, PR, and influencers. We'll just go step by step and describe all these uh, tools like properly. But before we do that, let's try to take a look at some like offers that you should avoid in your business. So the first mistake when you try to outsource your marketing is be aware that such types of offers, when somebody offers you like exact amount of subscribers within a short amount of period, so all these will not be done organically. These are the bots that you know totally will hurt your project and not will help for sure. So again, try to avoid use such type of services. So as I've mentioned, the main channel is the social mass media. So according to the statistics that we have, uh, we have two main uh, channels in the crypto. So the first is the Telegram with the most amount of users and the second is Twitter. So let's start just take a deeper look at the Telegram. So when you just trying to uh, join a new Telegram group, what you should look at for? So definitely you see the amount of members, but most of the people stop at the, just this point. 
But the number, like on the right-hand side, is even more important. Because if you have 800 people online, that means this is the real community, and the 12,000 in most cases are not. So in our company, we like establish the metrics that uh, somehow give us the understanding that the community is grown organically. In case if the ratio of the online members to the overall members is approximately 18, from 80 to 20 percent, in this case, it can be treated as an organic community. So yeah, this, by the way, is a bad case. The next one is the Twitter. So let's take a look at this example. What we see here, like we browse the page, and the first screen we see 30,000 followers, quite impressive, but let's scroll it down. What we see here is a six likes with a two reposts and one like. So it seems like only the team itself is liking the posts and just doing some retweets of it, so this also is a bad case of social activity, because we understand now how these numbers are generated. So let's take a look at the example that we worked on, the Jasmine community. You can browse the Twitter and just also take a look at this uh, Twitter page as well. So we worked that through the three months and we increased organically the amount of followers up to 3,600. 3, so what we did actually, the main thing when you work with the community is trying to stay active. Because when you, uh, like, Twitter itself is a tool for your entertainment and engagement. So you should engage the users first. So that's why in our company, first what we do, we just create the brand marketing strategy. By creating the brand marketing strategy, we just create the marketing funnel according to which we should lead our users from all the socials, all the websites, to the communication channel. Because communication channel is the main channel where you convert your community member to a real investor. So in our case, we just use the uh, Twitter as a channel to lead users uh, to the Telegram. So after that, you also should keep active posting. As I've mentioned previously, uh, socials are mostly done for entertainment. So you should entertain your customer. It should, you know, like Twitter should contain only the updates of your product because to be honest, that's, that's quite boring. There should be some human voice behind it and you should just diversify your content throughout the week. Uh, definitely the cross-promotion is a good thing as well because when we try to use the influencers and expect to gain like 30,000 more people and so on, it doesn't work like that. Every big numbers that are organically built, they are done gradually. So that's why take a look at, take a view at your competitors, at your partners and try to build them, the cross-promotion with them, try to build the AMAs on Twitter so it gives you the ability to reach to their audience as well and bring some more people on board. And, and the last thing that we always forget about is a medium, because most of the time we want to say more than Twitter allows us to do, more than Facebook, Instagram, Reddit allows us to do. So that's why when you're just working on some crucial update of your product, so try to use medium, try to use the keywords there, and it also will help you with the Google indexation. As I promised you, the second tool is the advertising. So let's take a look at the uh, results that one of our clients reached by themselves. So these ads were done on the CoinGecko because most of us are thinking that the CoinGecko is a mecca and they will generate us a hundred of users. So let's take a deeper view. So here, let's convert it into the dollars. So eight, they spend eight thousand dollars and they get two thousand clicks. So they paid like for one click three point five dollar dollars approximately. So this is just a click. It's not even a member of your community. So this is just a person that landing on your website. And after that, you should work also on the conversion of the website and overall that you'll get the price of one user will become approximately maybe $350 because the conversion works like this. So what we recommend and what we do on our side, try to experiment with the different channels. Don't be afraid of it. For example, let's take a look at the 4chan. Quite a controversial, for sure, but why not to try? You know, people are also sitting there, and what we get from the numbers was the cost per click was five cents. Five cents in comparison with, as remember, $3.5. The second case may be the big media. We also get quite good numbers here. We have just paid 25 cents for 1,000 views, because cost per millennium is cost for 1,000 views. Let's move forward, let's focus on the PR, also like some uh, magical tool that most of the uh, projects thinking that if they 
be like published on main tier like publishers, uh, they have article there, they will get a huge, huge community. So mostly from our experience, PR is working in two reasons. The first why you should use the PR is awareness and brand recognition. So it's mostly done on the retention side of the business, not in terms of generating new leads. And the second one is the Google indexation and SEO. In case if you want to increase like our reputation and we want to increase the retention, we should go maybe mostly with the crypto-oriented uh, uh, publishers. Ta Coin Telegraph will be nice. Coin Desk. In case if our main goal is just you know to increase our Google indexation to work on the SEO, so in this case, Forbes, Benzinga, Yahoo Finance, Seeking Alpha, and so on might be quite suitable. But also. PR is not a lead generation kind of uh, a tool. And the last and the most trickiest part are the influencers. Especially I really love them because uh, all of them are promising you a great results. They are charging a huge amount of money. Uh, but in, again, if we take a deeper look at the, their current situation, we'll see that definitely has a big amount of subscribers, like 95,000, like pretty impressive. But now we understand that we should look beyond these numbers and look at the numbers of engagement. And in this case, the engagement number shows that there are only 34 likes and there are 130 comments. So again, also be aware to work with such type of influencers and always try to understand how much the target audience of your product and your project is related to the target audience of the influencer that you want to go with. So by the end of the presentation, you will be able to receive some professional tailor solution as a bonus, so stay tuned, don't miss it. And uh, I just want to like, give you the overview of how Coin Liquidity Solution is working. So what we do in our business, you remember at the beginning I said that we're working on the two main business aspects of the crypto. So what we do on the marketing side, we take community members and lead them and transfer them to your traders with our market making and liquidity management solutions. And about that, we'll tell you more in details. My colleague, Andre. Andre, please. Thank you, Vinor. Hello, everyone. My name is Andre, and I'm a senior business development officer at Coin Liquidity Solutions. Now, what I will be talking about is market making. So many projects reach a certain level of their development where the most logical question is how to proceed next and what to do. Now, the best way to go about it is actually to expand further onto centralized and decentralized exchanges. Now, a lot of projects actually ask us a question, which one is better? The answer is simple. You should have both of them. So every project should have a minimum of one DEX and a one centralized exchange. Now, with decentralized exchanges, it is quite simple because the choice will depend on the blockchain on which your token is or coin is based. Now with centralized exchanges, this is where it gets tricky and you might get fooled. As you know, on CoinGecko, there are more than uh, 700 different exchanges. So if you have a professional who works in the field and can give you an advice, you should follow that advice. Otherwise, I'll give you a couple of metrics that you can follow to narrow down your search. Now the first one is API keys. Why it is important? It is important because the software, the trading software that you will go to be using on any exchange will operate and communicate with the exchange through the API keys. So if API keys are bad or there are interruptions, then you're going to have bad software that's working on your token. The second metric that you should follow is trading activity on main pairs or is it wash trading? Wash trading in simple words is self-trading. So what I mean by that is that if you see an exchange where the main pairs like Bitcoin, LTC, ETH, they have 90% of the total volume of the exchange, you can assume that people and traders that go onto that exchange, they mostly trade Bitcoin or LTC. So why would they trade an altcoin? So that's a good one to look for. Relationship of the volume to the main pairs, that's actually what we were talking about, including the wash trading. So wash trading is a little bit harder to a spot, uh, it's basically the self-trading within the spread. So if you have a little bit of trading knowledge, you can spot that, but otherwise you better ask somebody who's been in trading and a lot of traders actually know what that means. The next one is reduced fees. This is a qu quite simple. 
but make sure you know what are the fees and what are the options that you can get from the exchange because while doing market making, the order books, the spread and all other tools that the market maker, maker is using, you're going to spend additional funds. So you should allocate an extra budget for that. And that's very important because it might come to a lot of fees. So the last but not least is similar work and geography. So you can use various services and websites like similar work to check which country, from which country the exchange gets the most visitors. So for example, if you're based in US, and you get an Asian exchange, that's questionable. But if your community is from Asia, that's good, and vice versa. So it works back and forth, but make sure that you know which country the traders are mostly from on that given exchange that you're trying to go at. So now, uh, let's talk a little bit about market making and what can you do actually on decentralized exchanges and centralized exchanges. Now with decentralized exchanges it's quite simple because there is automated market making and you can actually, the only thing that you need to do and can do is support volume. So what we were able to do is we were able to uh, uh, make the strategy where uh, the fees that are paid while generating and supporting the volume on DEX are paid in your own tokens. So this actually takes the load from paying the fees from your pocket like USDT or any other fiat or stable token and paying that in your token. So that actually decreases the, the, that hurdle, especially in the beginning. On top of that, the fees are getting reduced almost half. So that's the one thing that we can help and some market makers can do that too. In terms of, in terms of uh, centralized exchanges, this is a quite often case that you can see on some of the tokens. They had no volume, no activity, and then suddenly the volume goes up to 40,000. So that looks artificial. That shouldn't be done like that. That's actually a bad case of market making. What they should have done is they should have gradually increased the volume so this way it would look more organic and it would attract more traders. Now, when everybody Everybody here knows CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap. So this is the bad example of what we see when we go onto a token or a coin that has a low activity. And believe me that there are top 400, top 300 projects that have the same situation. They have low trust scores. They have no money in plus minus 2% of the debt. So this means that barely anybody is trading and all other metrics are bad. So imagine if you do marketing and you attract traffic to your project and people actually think that the project is good and you're already trading, they go onto CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap, they check the situation is bad, they will not convert into traders. Now this is a good case, sorry. This is actually a good case and this is ideally how the project should look. Good metrics, good spread, plus minus 2% zone, 24 hour volume is high. So it can be lower, but it's still good. Trust scores, everything is green. So it looks attractive. So you want to invest and go ahead. So what I want to do next is actually showcase you a couple of examples that we worked with and achieved good results. Of course, this also, it, it, it doesn't only depend on our work because it's a mutual work. So it's a combination of marketing and market making and the product itself. So, as Vinor was saying, that in a, a symbiosis that gives you the best value. So, this is the initial setup that we got on Jasmine Coin. They had mid-size exchanges, mediocre liquidity, and low trading activity. So, after a couple of months, what we achieved together with the team is the Coinbase and Binance listing, along with the liquidity growth in their order books up to 10 times. And in big days on certain exchanges, their organic volume reached 2.5 million. Another case is student coin. Uh, they've been on the market for quite some time and what they had is that they had a very low volume, low trading activity and the main point is that they were listed on multiple exchanges but they didn't know which one is the main market. And this is very important because when projects have multiple exchanges, it is a law that they will have one or two main markets, nothing else. All other markets will follow that. So what we did through our work is that we managed to get their uh, volume growth up to 10 million again on peak days. It cannot be sustainable throughout all the times We identified two main markets that we put most focus on so that they don't spend money on others and the price growth on certain times during the conferences during the marketing and our activity reached up to 25 times of their value So now as Vinor promised we have a little trick for you and a bonus so you can follow the QR code 
fill out the short form and uh, get the free analytics from us. So if any of you guys uh, have any in-depth questions or topics that you would like to discuss and talk in more details, you can join us at our booth 75. It's on the right side when you exit and we'll be glad to see you, meet you there and give you analytical advice. Thank you.